On May 24, 2004, three men attacked this environmental activist on a beach near Mumbai. She had tried to stop them stealing the precious sand. Since that day, these types of attacks have just gotten worse. It sounds hard to believe, but reports from India show it's home to the world's deadliest sand mafias. Criminal gangs there have burned journalists alive, hacked activists to death, and run over police officers with trucks. But why are people so desperate for sand? Is it really so valuable? Sand is everywhere. The tarmac on the road, the concrete in your house, the glass of your windows, and the silicon chip in your phone. We use more sand each year than any other material on the planet, and it stood the test of time. But given that one third of all the land on Earth is classified as desert, you'd think sand would be easy to get hold of, right? Wrong. Even desert countries in the Middle East import sand from as far away as Australia and Canada. The world's tallest building is an 830 meter skyscraper in Dubai that was built with sand from more than 10,000 kilometers away. That's because of the type of sand that's fueling the world's construction boom. Desert sand is too smooth for most concrete because the grains have been polished by the wind. It's like the difference between running your hand over these round hazelnuts and these rough walnuts. There's not enough friction to make it strong enough to build. Instead, people take easy to reach sand from rivers, beaches, and the sea floor and this can't be replenished on human timescales. So how short are we? We know that demand for this resource is going to continue to grow and it's already causing problems in many places in the world. This is Louise Gallagher, author of a landmark UN report in 2019 on solving sand shortages. Now, scientists always complain they need more data, but when it comes to sand, they really have no idea. It is the second most consumed resource after water on the planet. And we don't know where it's coming from and on what the impacts of that are. Like that's, that's the nature of the problem. But what they do know worries them. Researchers in 2017 modeled that global demand for sand is growing much faster than what's easily available. The world would need to make more sand, find new sources of it, or just use less. Otherwise, it will run out. This is a big problem because sand is a fundamental building block of modern life. Sand used in concrete has been essential to the global construction boom, as people in emerging economies move to cities. More than half of the cement in 2019 was made in China. It uses more in just a few years than the US did in the entire last century. And people around the world are building more and more. India has become the second biggest cement producer. Over the last half century, Singapore has built artificial islands that have increased its landmass by a quarter. And it did this with massive amounts of sand imported from its neighbors. The sand crisis isn't even just a problem of scarcity. The industry is small scale and badly regulated, and that's hurting people and ecosystems today. Miners take sand from the bottom of rivers in the sea for low pay and without oversight. There are reports of child labor from India to Uganda, there's no protection, there's no, and, and the riverbed is getting deeper, so they have to constantly, you know, go deeper. Um, it can impact their eardrums, it can impact, you know, they develop all sorts of complica health complications, but of course, if it's illegal, there's no support at, at all, right, for them. Kieran Pereira is an independent researcher who's written a book on solving the sand crisis. She cites a report from an environmental group last year that counted 193 people who died through illegal sand mining in India in just two years. When we remove sand from such huge, massive quantities, it's bound to have impacts. And these impacts at the moment are externalized onto society and onto the environment. Uh, they, they're, not, they're not reflected in the costs of the sand and gravel at all. Sand mining adds to climate threats like rising sea levels and drought. It erodes beaches, destroys riverbeds, and makes landslides more likely. An estimated half a million people living along the Mekong River will need to be moved from collapsing riverbanks, partly because of sand mining. In India, it's pushed species like the gharial crocodile to the verge of extinction. So how can we solve the global sand crisis? Experts say the first step is cutting the amount of concrete we use. 
That could mean using more efficient concrete mixers with less cement, or replacing it altogether with alternatives like timber or rammed earth. Building denser cities means less concrete for each person. Then sand needs to be reused. When buildings are demolished, the waste can be crushed and mixed into cement. Rubble can be used to make building foundations and roads. This already happens in some places where new building materials are expensive. Germany, for instance, recycles more than two-thirds of its construction waste. But in countries like India and Bangladesh, it's less than 10%. By taking that approach, we're taking into account the fact that this material is not uh, available to us in, in, in infinite terms forevermore, in you know, all the availability we would want. The third thing is finding and certifying sustainable sources of sand. Take Greenland. It's increasing the world's supply of sand as its ice sheet melts. That already delivers 8% of the sediments added to the world's oceans each year. It's hard to believe, but global warming is speeding up that process. Experts say that mining Greenland sand could ease the pain of quitting concrete for the rest of the world. But it would have to be done together with local communities and without hurting the pristine Arctic wildlife. And that brings us to the final point. Those solutions just help fix the shortages of sand. But to protect people and nature, governments also need to regulate the industry and enforce rules to stop the illegal sand trade. We can build without sand. There are plenty of examples where sand, our ability to construct, does not, uh, is, is, is not dependent on our, on our need for sand. We can decouple these two. And so we can still build and allow for human uh, prosperity without destroying our ecosystem. Did you know that sand is in so many things that we use every day? Let us know in the comments and hit subscribe.